we want to find the equation of the vertical asymptote and the equation of the slant asymptote of the given rational function. Before finding the vertical asymptotes though, it is important to factor the numerator and denominator to see if there are any common factors. Because the zeros of the common factors produce holes in the function and they will not give us vertical asymptotes. For example, if we take a look at these two functions quickly, notice how in factored form, we can easily see that x equals negative two and x equals negative one in both cases make the denominators equal to zero. So while these values would be excluded from the domain, notice how in this first function, there's a common factor of x plus one in the numerator denominator, and therefore at x equals negative one, there would not be a vertical asymptote, there would be a hole in the function. So this rational function only has one vertical asymptote at x equals negative two. But looking at the second function, notice how there are no common factors between the numerator and denominator, and therefore this function would have two vertical asymptotes, one at x equals negative two and one at x equals negative one. So going back to our example, let's begin by factoring the numerator. Notice how the denominator does not factor. So let's see if this will factor into two binomial factors. Notice how the first term is eight x squared, so we could have x and eight x, or two x and four x. Let's try two x and four x. The second terms must come from the factors of negative one, so that the sum of the inner and outer product would be negative two x. So notice how if we put a negative one here, or a minus one, and a plus one here, the inner product is negative four x, the outer product is two x, which does sum to negative two x. Now that it's in factored form, we can see the numerator and denominator do not share any common factors, and therefore this rational function will not have any holes, and therefore we can find the equation of the vertical asymptote by setting the denominator equal to zero and solving for x. So we would have four x minus three equals zero. So we would add three to both sides and then divide by four. So we have x equals three-fourths as the equation of the vertical asymptote. Now it doesn't ask, but remember we'd also have to exclude this value from the domain of the rational function. So the equation of the vertical asymptote is x equals three-fourths. Now let's talk about the slant asymptote. A rational function has a slant asymptote when the degree of the numerator is one degree higher than the degree of the denominator. So notice in this case, the degree of the numerator is two, the degree of the denominator is one, and therefore we'll have a slant asymptote. And so to find the equation of the slant asymptote, we'll actually have to divide the numerator by the denominator. And because the coefficient of the denominator is four, we're gonna go ahead and perform long division. So we'll have the quantity eight x squared minus two x minus one divided by the quantity four x minus three. So we're gonna perform this division, then determine what's happening to our quotient as x approaches positive or negative infinity. So to begin, we're gonna determine what times four x is equal to eight x squared. Well, two x times four x would be eight x squared, so the first term in the quotient is two x. If we're not able to determine this first term, we can always take eight x squared and divide by four x. Notice eight x squared divided by four x would be two x. And now we're gonna multiply two x and four x minus three. Two x times four x is eight x squared. And then two x times negative three is negative six x or minus six x. Now we wanna subtract, but instead of subtracting, we're going to add the opposite. So we can change this to addition if we change the sign of this term and change the sign of this term. Notice how this would be zero, and now the x term would be four x. Bring down the last term of minus one. Now we want to know what times four x would be equal to four x, which would be one, so the next term would be plus one. Or again, if we need to, we can take four x and divide by four x to get the one. Well, one times four x minus three is just four x minus three. We're gonna subtract this by adding the opposite. So we're gonna change the sign, change the sign, and change the sign. So we have negative one plus three, that's positive two. 
which means our remainder is two, we can write the quotient as two x plus one plus two over our divisor of four x minus three. And now we can use this quotient to find the equation of the slant asymptote. We want to determine what's happening to this quotient as x approaches positive or negative infinity. We want to focus mainly on this fraction here, or a remainder. Notice as x approaches positive or negative infinity, the denominator either increases without bound or decreases without bound, and therefore this fraction is going to approach zero, and therefore as x approaches positive or negative infinity, this rational function will approach the line y equals two x plus one, which is the equation of our slant or oblique asymptote. Notice how this question does not ask us for a horizontal asymptote. If we think about it, if the rational function is approaching a slanted or oblique line, then the rational function would not have a horizontal asymptote. Another reason we know this is, notice how the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, and therefore as x approaches infinity, notice how the function values would also approach infinity, verifying there is no horizontal asymptote. And before we go, let's verify these results by looking at the graph of our rational function. Notice here we have our vertical asymptote with the equation x equals three-fourths. And here we have our slant asymptote with the equation y equals two x plus one. So this graph does verify that our work is correct. I hope you found this explanation helpful.